Year after year, loss of control is cited as the number one cause of general aviation accidents, and the cause of many loss of control accidents is a stall followed by a spin. Why does it keep happening? Let's look at some of the things we learn in training and how these lessons can be applied to either help or hurt us in flying. Most of us have seen this chart or something like it. It shows the relationship between different bank angles and the stall speed and load factor the aircraft experiences at those angles. A few figures stick out. At a 45 degree bank angle, our stall speed goes up by about 20%, and at a 60 degree angle, it goes up by 40%, and we experience a load factor of two. Our aircraft feels twice as heavy as it does in level flight. What's missing from this chart, and what causes a good deal of misunderstanding, is that it's assumed that the aircraft is in level flight. It's maintaining altitude. The reason our load factor and stall speed go up with bank angle is because as we lose vertical lift in the bank, we have to pull up more. The wing has to generate more total lift, and our angle of attack gets higher, getting us closer to a stall. But if we aren't trying to maintain altitude, these relationships don't hold up. Let's illustrate with some extreme examples. We're flying the extra over the Chesapeake Bay today. It has an accelerometer, which is going to tell us what our load factor is in certain maneuvers. Right now, it's reading 1g, equivalent to the force of gravity we all feel on Earth. Let's roll into a bank to the left, and we're going to bring the stick back to try to maintain altitude. This is the classic steep turn maneuver from the Airman Certification Standards, the ACS. You do it on your check ride. We'll ease our way into 60 degrees, and you'll see the G meter showing too. We're double the load factor, just as the chart showed. We'd feel heaviness in our seats right now in this maneuver. Now, let's roll out and try something different. We're going to gain some altitude first, and then roll all the way left, 90 degrees. Only this time, we're not going to try to maintain altitude. We're not pulling the stick back. Obviously, we start losing altitude quickly, but the G meter is still around 1. We're not loading up the aircraft. No extra heaviness felt in the seat of our pants. What about that chart? According to that, at 90 degrees, we should be experiencing like an infinite load factor, kind of like what the middle of a black hole must be like, right? But instead, we feel the same load as we do sitting on our couch watching TV. Try doing that same maneuver, getting close to 90 degrees banked and pull the stick back to hold altitude. Now we're seeing high G factors as the blood rushes out of our heads. This isn't just a trick of aerobatic aircraft either. Let's look at the Cessna to make it relevant for what most of us are flying. We're in level flight, a bit slower than cruise. Let's go ahead and enter a 60 degree bank to the left, and we're going to try to hold altitude. We're back up around 2 G's with a higher stall speed, which is why that horn is going off. And if we're not coordinated, we could easily spin. Part of this, not the spin part, is a maneuver we do in commercial training, the accelerated stall. The spin part is something we practice when we start to pursue the CFI rating though, but here it highlights the danger of accelerated stalls if we're not well coordinated. Now, like before, we're going to get some altitude and bank the aircraft over. This time though, we're letting the nose fall and aren't trying to hold altitude. We're all the way over at 90 degrees bank, but no stall horn. We're not loading up the wings because we're not pulling back on the stick. When this was first demonstrated for me, I was shocked. And the reason why so many people are shocked by it is how we've learned the relationship between bank angle and stall speed from this graph. We have it put in our heads that we should never go past 30 degrees bank in the traffic pattern. This is excellent advice. It takes into account the added stall speed in the bank, but it assumes level flight. It assumes we're pulling back on the stick as we bank. Make sure as you keep this limit in mind, you also think of how you can keep the wings unloaded in a turn. Many of us overshoot the runway on final sometimes. There's a risk as we turn back to the center line that we try to hold the nose up. This is where the wing loading could get us into a lot of trouble and risk a stall spin. Anytime you maneuver at slow speeds, make sure you keep the nose low. This takes the load off the wings and keeps you at a safe airspeed. The airplane flies better with the nose low and more air moves over the wings and surfaces and the controls are more effective. If you're too low, add power. Don't bring that nose up. It can feel unnatural to keep the nose down in the traffic pattern, but you're doing it to increase the controllability and prevent a stall spin. Any other problems that crop up can be fixed, but a stall spin at low altitude is typically unrecoverable.